Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you, and I am the best reporting on the Eagles. Listen, man, before we get into the meat and potatoes, I gotta let you know, I wouldn't be doing my due diligence and let you know that the hurt season hats, buckets, snapbacks, rent due hats, buckets, snapbacks, all that's available on the print champs. Make sure you tap in and make sure you DM me for something off on that. I can help you out with that. You know what I'm saying? We Listen, we being real generous with the percentage off codes. You know what I'm saying? Because I want every Everybody to be rocking one this summer And we getting close to that goal You know what I'm saying Listen shout out to Big Manscape. Tomorrow's Father's Day You can still send your dad a tracking number Go to Manscaped Use code Brunson Get yourself 20% off Get yourself free shipping And the free shipping I, I fought for that for y'all Listen let's get into the meat and potatoes man Let's talk about it real quick Out of the Eagles In-house free agents Guys that were on the team last year That aren't picked up by another team right now Who would you want to see back Now I'm going to talk about Three guys real quick. I'm going to talk about Cravion LeBlanc, uh, Mikel Roby Coleman, and I'm going to talk about Jason Peters, man. I think that, you know, those might be the strongest three candidates of somebody that you could possibly bring back. But let's X out Jason Peters right now. Listen, it's time to get a young left tackles. They run. Jason Peters had a spectacular career as a Philadelphia Eagle. But now it's time to see what Jordan Mailata and Andre Dillard could bring to the table. So I'm not even thinking about that. Um, Crevion LeBlanc. Possibly, you do need some cornerback depth. You do need some serviceable cornerbacks. But I really would really consider bringing back Nikel Roby Coleman. He has to be the prize out of all of the guys that's still out there that was on the team last year. Listen, the scheme and Jim Schwartz ain't do Nikel Roby Coleman no good. Nikel Roby Coleman's nickname was Slot God before he came to us. What did we do? We put the Slot God on the island. <laughs> that's not where he eat at. You know what I'm saying? And I see what this defense is with JG. I can see it primarily being a cover three scheme, and then the Kel Roby Coleman can eat in a situation like that. A lot of our cornerbacks are going to eat in this new scheme. It's not just leave your guy on the island and hope that they could run an Olympic track record, you know what I'm saying, and be able to smack the ball down. No. When you got, listen, the way that we played the cornerback position from a defensive standpoint was just like we wanted these cornerbacks to be superheroes, man. Let's look at it, man. Let's talk about it, man. Darius Slay. Multiple Pro Bowls in a row before he come here. Only one interception when he gets here. Come on. Darius Slate was the only one equipped to even play that style of defense that we was playing. Because Darius Slate is a lockdown corner. And he locked down 90% of the people that he played last year. You know what I'm saying? But when you don't get the turnovers, it gets overlooked. And Darius Slate couldn't get the turnovers to pass deflections because he's always playing wide receivers with his back to the ball because you're playing man. You know what I'm saying? There's been plenty of times where the Philadelphia Eagles were stuck in a mad situation. And, you know, the safety forgets his assignment. Now it's just one-on-one -on -one and somebody running wide open. How many times have we seen that? You know what I mean? Let's tighten it up. Let's do better. But I would bring Nikel Roby Coleman back. I would put Nikel Roby Coleman in the slot. And I think he'll do he'll do good under this new scheme and under these new coaches. I really, truly believe that. Because you can't get much worse. You just can't get much worse. So, yeah, man. Nikel Roby Coleman would be a guy that I would consider bringing back and putting him back in the slot. In a scheme that makes sense. Let's talk about the Sixers for a second, man. Congratulations to the Sixers for forcing the game. Seven, bringing it back to Philly. Um, we got high odds to win this because, you know, we were the number one seed. So these are the perks of being the number one seed. Having that game seven be a home game for you. And, you know, I'm... Um, I'm optimistic that we're going to go to the uh, Eastern Conference Finals for the first time since Allen Iverson took us there. Hopefully, we can get this thing done. Um, let's talk about the game, though, yesterday. I mean, the game was, you know, it was a whirlwind of emotions and anxiety. It kind of felt like an Eagles game times two. You know what I'm saying? With Ben Simmons just blatantly picking up some of the most ridiculous fouls. Ben Simmons, at this point in his career, to me, comes off as a guy that's just not coachable. You know what I mean? I mean, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Runner-up defensive player of the year. You know how important you are to be on the court. You refuse to shoot jump shots. You told us three years ago in 2017 that this hack had been from the free throw line thing wouldn't happen. It's still happening today. You know what I'm saying? Doc Rivers said that he's going to implore you to shoot about four jump shots a game. You don't shoot any jump shots. You know, I hate to just come down on Ben Simmons like this, but my God, when Ben Simmons is on the court in the playoffs, he's a complete liability at this point. And I love Ben Simmons. I love him. He's a complete liability at this point. There's so many drives where I see Ben Simmons bringing up the ball full speed. Then he stops at the foul line and looks for somebody to bail him out. Ben Simmons is petrified of the free throw line. You need to attack at that size. Get to the free throw line. Get there early and often. 
You know what I'm saying? Don't wait till it's too late to where you don't want to be there. In the first quarter, Ben Simmons needs to be getting to the free throw line, attacking and forcing the call. Because when you do that as Ben Simmons, you put pressure on the defense, you get guys in early foul trouble, and you get to practice on your free throws in a live game situation to where the free throws aren't that important because it's early in the game. It just makes perfect sense. And also, by getting to the free throw line and possibly hitting the second free throw at least, you know what I'm saying? You make Atlanta inbound the ball and it slows down what they're doing so they can't move fast. It just makes perfect sense. I don't know if Doc Rivers is beating this down his throat, but pause. But Doc Rivers being the coach that he is, I feel like Doc Rivers is saying these things. Ben Simmons is just not taking heed to it. Which is why this, I, which is why you you know this could be the end of a Ben Simmons era in Philadelphia. Listen, Tyrese Maxey, Ben Simmons is Carson Wentz. Tyrese Maxey is Jalen Hurts. Every time Maxey is on the floor, it looks different. Same scenario you could be looking at. How ironic! It's the same scenario you could be looking at. Maxey, a rookie, is playing big minutes. In serious playoff situations to where Ben Simmons can't even be on the floor because he will not attack and try to hit these free throws. Ben Simmons is not trying to put that weight on his shoulders. So many times in that game yesterday, I saw Ben Simmons look away from the moment because he was scared to get fouled. And he was scared to be put on the free throw line. Petrified. Petrified. You know what I mean? He is, Come on. Come on. Apply pressure, Ben Simmons. That's all you got to do. And then let's talk about the ref situation. It's not just Ben Simmons with the free throws. You know, I feel like the Philadelphia 76ers overcame a fix. I feel like the game was fixed. You know what I'm saying? And we just somehow, some way overcame the plan of the referees. How do you not have a starter attempt a free throw? <laughs> How do you not have a starter attempt a free throw until the fourth quarter? If you're the 76ers, you're talking about a guy in Embiid who gets there 14 times a game. What is this? And then you call him all these offensive fouls on Embiid because his shoulders are just too big. But what happened to the offensive foul on John Collins when he dunked on Embiid and put his whole elbow in his eyeball? You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I just don't like I, I don't like how the refs are able to dictate some games. But on the other end, if you breathe on Trey Young, when he does that little silly pump fake, they blow in the whistle for it. Get it together and be consistent with the foul calling, man. Seth Curry right now is the hero of this, you know, series. Win, lose, or draw, in my opinion. Seth Curry is playing like a max player. Tobias Harris is playing like a max player. He just had that bad game five. Let's keep it 100. So did Joel Embiid. Just had a bad game five. Joel Embiid and Tobias Harris have been more than solid in the playoffs. Just had a... It happens. It happens. They've been more than solid in the playoffs. But Seth Curry is taking ownership of the moment. I think Seth Curry has been the best shooter this year in the NBA playoffs. I don't care. I'm talking eliminated teams and all. Damn, you can say whoever you want. Nobody has been more consistent from the three-point line than Seth Curry. Period. Look it up. The numbers don't lie. The guy got over 23s in this series alone. That's fantastic. That's phenomenal. He's hitting them off the dribble. He's hitting them on a run. He's just pulling up in people's faces. He's doing what he got to do. He's a lethal three-point shooter, and they need to put some money in his pocket because he bailed out a max player in Ben Simmons. Period. Now, I want to see the bench come out and do some more stuff. <laughs> Uh, Maxie and Milton, they've had more moments, but this game seven is critical. This game seven is critical to the era of Ben Simmons. If we lose this series, I could really see a situation to where Ben Simmons is moved in the offseason. Period. I could really see a situation because you lose defense when Ben Simmons is off the floor, but you don't gain no offense at all. You gain no offense at all. And then by Ben Simmons being able to, you know, lose himself and lose his cool and put himself in bad foul situations, you get nothing out of having Ben Simmons on the floor. You get nothing. You know what I'm saying? You're forcing guys like Max, who had to come out there and hit big three, drives to the bucket. You, you, you know, you're forcing stuff. And we were actually down about 10, 12 points in this game, still rallied to come back. So I like us in game seven. I mean, I'm going to pick the Philadelphia 76ers to advance again. You know, I don't want to look to the future, but, you know, I, I really feel like we're strong favorites. I think this win is going to propel us to win in, the, uh, win in this series. And, you know, um, I don't want to look to the future, like I said, but if we do win, I'd much rather play Brooklyn because they aren't healthy. You know what I'm saying? Giannis and the Bucks. 
I just think they got the right recipe, you know, to make it even tougher for us than Atlanta is. But, you know, we the number one seed and we got home field advantage, home court advantage. I'm sorry. So we just got to see how it shake down, man. Let me know what y'all think in the comments, man. Let me know what y'all think about, you know, um, what eagle you might want to see back, if any eagle at all. And also, man, give me your thoughts on this upcoming game seven, man. It's going to be crazy tomorrow, man. <laughs>